U.S. Army Forces Command is the Army's largest major command. Tasked with training, mobilizing, and deploying the bulk of the troops fighting the war on terrorism, Forcecom may also be the Army's busiest. Forcecom Commander General Hondo Campbell sat down with Gail McCabe at Camp Shelby, Mississippi. For the last 40 years or so, you joined the National Guard or the Reserve. You signed up for one week in a month, basically two weeks uh, a year. This model would suggest that when you sign up for the reserve component, you're signing up for a weekend a month, a two-week or 15-day uh, annual training period a year, more training days in the year prior to deployment, and then you are signing up for a period of availability for mobilization and deployment one year out of every five. When you go to these sites, you talk to soldiers and you talk to commanders, and you get feedback. What do you do with this information? As new techniques and new tactics and new procedures um, are evolved in the theater. They're very quickly migrated back to the training base. And so they are benefiting from the most contemporary knowledge of the successful tactics, techniques, and procedures that are being embraced by operational forces. Another component you have to be aware of is the human factor. Many of these troops are now facing their third, possibly fourth rotation into Iraq or Afghanistan. They're tired. How do you offset that? The first way is you've got to have a larger active component. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Congress has acknowledged the need for a larger army. Uh, the senior civilian leadership of the Department of Defense has acknowledged the need for a larger army. And we are now in the process of growing the army. The second piece has to do with accessibility to the reserve component. And we have been provided uh, increased accessibility to the reserve component based on the Secretary of Defense recent promulgation of new mobilization policy that allows us to involuntarily mobilize reserve components that have heretofore been mobilized in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. And then the third piece of that, and this remains to be seen, it's whether or not the requirements will decrease over time. And my personal belief is that we're in a persistent conflict. We're in a protracted conflict that, that will be persistent for a decade, if not a generation. There's things that, at your level, you have to consider when you make your decisions. Uh, politics, resources, manpower. How do you balance them? Well, there's no question that this is complex business. There's always going to be issues associated with mission and resource mismatch. There's always going to be more requirements than there are resources to match those requirements. And so the only way I know how to deal with that condition is to prioritize. And you need to know what's enduringly important. And what is enduringly important is that we train these formations for the war fight, that we develop our leaders, and that we care for our soldiers. And if we can relate our effort and our activity every day to one of those enduring priorities, we'll get it far more right than we will wrong.